Hello everyone, it's me Clayson, and I just finished watching Earwig and the Witch, directed by Goro Miyazaki, the son of Hayao Miyazaki, and it's the very first Studio Ghibli film that we've had in six years. So, from the exact same author that gave us Howl's Moving Castle, we have a story of a precocious little orphan who manages to find out a secret about her mother and an incredible band that she had in a, in a story full of magic and, and music. Even though it does take a little while to get really good, though its technical merits do manage to make me smile. Let's get to the story, shall we? The story is about Earwig, a young girl who's left behind at an orphanage by her mother, who's a witch who's running away from 12 other witches after leaving her band. Earwig grows up as an orphan and is picked up by by a mysterious woman named Bella Yaga, and an even more mysterious and rather intimidating tall man known as the Mandrake. While it seems like all she can do is just perform chores all around the house, as she's told, Earwig suddenly finds out some interesting information about Yaga, the Mandrake, and her mother, who she hasn't seen in years. But that's all I'll say about the story without spoiling anything. Now, the film is only 82 minutes long, and that's including the opening and ending credits. And despite that short length, it's actually at a pretty relaxed and fairly slow pace through most of it. And the majority of the film, like the second act, is mostly taken up by her doing chores around the house, while show showing off her snarky personality and her precocious demeanor. But it's actually not as action-packed as you'd expect from a Studio Ghibli film when it comes to this kind of setup. Granted, it does ramp up towards the, towards the third act, but it does feel like it takes a while to get there, especially considering how strong the film opens and how great the animation is. I've always complained about 3D animation, particularly in anime productions, but Studio Ghibli is, of course, one of the kings of animation, and the film hardly looks like an anime at all when it comes to its visuals. It mo looks more like a CGI film to come from DreamWorks or Blue Sky Studios, which is to say that the animation looks really good for a theatrical production from one of those, let alone a Japanese studio. I wouldn't say it's on the level of Lupin III's CGI film, but it's definitely up there with one of the better efforts. Not to mention the soundtrack, particularly for the rock numbers, is extremely catchy and very well done, particularly the film's themes in the opening and ending credits. And as this is from the author who did Howl's Moving Castle, there's a few Easter eggs to that film as well, particularly one in the illustrations in the ending credits, which also show how well the CGI character models manage to, manage to essentially match those of the original source material's illustrations. Granted, there are minor flaws in the animation. Some of the hair looks a little bit stiff, though it might be a stylistic choice, and some of the designs do look a little better in the 2D than they did in the 3D, but for the most part, the visuals work well. But the story, the biggest problem here, unfortunately, is that this just feels like part one of a story where it's very unlikely to me that we're going to get a sequel to it. It feels like just the prologue to a much bigger story, which might be the case in the novels, but in a movie, it does feel like you're kind of getting cheated out of what should be a more interesting story here. But still, I do think it's a good effort, and for little kids, it should be a fun, it should be a fun enough ride, particularly when the third act rolls around and when the big answers start coming in. Plus, the, the casts for both the English and Japanese voice acting are very good, even though the Japanese cast apparently hasn't worked in anime at all before. But you certainly wouldn't think it when it comes to you, when it comes to you hearing the film. While I, think, I do think Goro, Goro Miyazaki isn't quite on his father's level at this point, I do think he's got a bright future, and this film, while not perfect, is at least enjoyable. So if you're a fan of Ghibli and if you're a fan of good CGI animation, I think there are worse things to watch. That's why I'm going to give this a 6.5 out of 10. See you next time.